Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at different methods for running multiple operating systems on a Raspberry Pi. So let's go and get started. Right, here we have four Raspberry Pis. A Pi 4 in a heatsink case, a Pi 5 in an Argon Neo 5 NVMe case, a Pi 400 and a Pi 500. And everything we're going to cover in this video will work on any Pi 4 or Pi 5, including the keyboard computer variants. But I think we'll start out with this Pi 4, so let's get it connected. And there are three different ways we can boot multiple operating systems on the same Raspberry Pi. And the first one is the obvious one, but I'll mention it anyway, which is to switch boot media. So, for example, this Pi 4 currently has got Raspberry Pi OS on a microSD card, but we could take that out, take this card here, which has got Ubuntu on it, put this into the Pi like that, boot up, run Ubuntu, close things down, take it out, and go back to a Raspberry Pi OS, if I can get it back in here, like that. And we've been doing that on Raspberry Pis, well, since Raspberry Pis were created. In a similar way, we could also plug in another boot drive. So, for example, we could take our Ubuntu card down here, and we could put it into this little uh, reader, this USB 3 to a microSD reader, and we could plug this into uh, one of the USB 3 ports on the Pi, like that. And which operating system the Pi would boot first, the one on the uh, microSD card here, or what is effectively here, a USB drive, would depend on how the Pi is configured. And this particular Pi is currently configured to boot first from the microSD card, but we could change that. And to show you that, let's turn on the power. There we go. And we'll go across to the HDMI output and speed through the boot process. And here, to change the boot order, we need to open up a terminal and enter the command sudo raspi config like that. I do love this display, it looks like really proper computing. And here we need to go down to advanced options and to boot order like that, where if we wanted to boot from the USB device first, we would select the second option there and enter like that. And it would say NVMe USB is now the default boot device, it has to be USB here on a Pi 4. Or we could put it back as I'm going to to the microSD card because uh, that's what I want here. Let's go back to boot order and set it to microSD card like that. And uh, we'll just tab down to finish and come out of this. Do we want to reboot now? I'm not going to reboot because in effect we haven't made any changes. We changed the boot order but changed it back again. So no reboot is currently required. However, what if we want to be able to choose the drive we boot from without having to switch around drives and change the boot order? Well, we can now do that too, as on October the 10th, 2024, a new boot menu was released for the Pi 4 and Pi 5. And this allows the boot drive to be selected on boot by pressing the spacebar. And to use this new boot menu, all we need to do is to be running the latest Raspberry Pi firmware. And do note that the firmware is stored on the Pi itself and not as part of an operating system on an SD card or USB drive or SSD or other media. So once the latest firmware is installed on a Pi, the new boot menu will be available regardless of what operating systems are being used. Anyway, to be running the latest firmware version, we first need to make sure that our Raspberry Pi is up to date. And because uh, I like to be neat and tidy, we'll start with a clear just to a clear the terminal. And we're first going to do a sudo apt and uh, update like that. This will update the Pi's repositories. And it's telling us everything is up to date, which is not a surprise. This Pi has been updated recently. But I'll show you the full process, which would continue with the sudo apt and a full upgrade like that, which here reports nothing to be upgraded. But if upgrades had been applied, it would now be important at this stage to do a sudo reboot. And so just to show you that, I'll also do a sudo reboot, assuming we did have things to be upgraded. We don't, but we'll do the reboot anyway. And thanks to the magic of filmmaking, here we are back again, where what I'm now going to do is to open up a terminal like that. And we're now going to check what firmware revision we're currently running by entering an RPI, EEPROM, and update like 
that, which shows us that our bootloader is up to date. It is from the 15th of April 2024, although it probably hasn't escaped your notice that the 15th of April 2024 is before the 10th of October 2024, which is when the new boot menu was added to the Raspberry Pi firmware. And the reason for this is because we're not currently on the latest Raspberry Pi firmware branch. Specifically, we're currently on the default firmware branch, which doesn't give us the very latest version. But fortunately, we can change this. Guess how we can do a sudo raspi config as we did a few moments ago. And again, we're going to go down to advanced options, but this time we're going to go to bootloader version like that, where I'm going to select the top option to get the latest bootloader image. There we go. And I'll select yes, because that's obviously what we want to do. It says okay. And uh, guess what? We now need to reboot. And oh look, the Pi is telling us we need to reboot. So let's do that. Reboot. And here we are. Raspberry Pi OS has resurrected itself once again. So let's open up a terminal. And of course, we're now going to check what firmware revision we're running like that. And yes, as we can see, we're now running a firmware revision from the 7th of December 2024 which is clearly after the 10th of October 2024, so we should have on this Pi now the new boot menu. So let's do a reboot. Let's do it from the menu just to annoy some people in the comments. We can use either method terminal or graphical interface, but we'll use the graphical interface and we will reboot. And as we reboot, I'm going to hold down the spacebar. Very exciting. Let's see what happens. We will do this in real time and yes, there we are, we have now got the boot menu, where we can boot from SD network or USB. And here I'm going to select four to boot from USB, which if you recall, is our micro SD card with Ubuntu on it, plugged into a USB adapter. And there we are, we've now arrived in Ubuntu. Very exciting and do all the usual Ubuntu stuff. There we are. But uh, for now, guess what? We're going to shut down again because this is a demo of a uh, selecting operating system. So we will do a shutdown uh, over there. I always lose it in Ubuntu. There we are. It must be uh, over there is our uh, restart like that. Do we want to restart? Surprisingly, we do because that's why I pressed restart. Don't you just love computers? And again, I'm going to press the space bar on boot. Although by default, this Pi will boot from micro SD card as we've seen but uh, we'll do it in the manual way. I'll press a one to boot from the uh, micro SD card, which here will return us to Raspberry Pi OS. And finally here, it's worth pointing out that because we've been working on a Raspberry Pi 4, we've seen the Pi boot menu you get on, well, a Raspberry Pi 4. But if we were using a Raspberry Pi 5, we'd see a slightly expanded Pi boot menu, which includes an extra option to boot from NVMe SSD. Right, having delved into multi-drive multi-boot scenarios, what if we want to have multiple operating systems installed on the same micro SD card, SSD, or other media? Well, we can do this using third-party software. And this includes using a tool called BerryBoot, which I covered on the channel some time ago. However, BerryBoot doesn't seem to have been updated since 2021. And so here we're going to use a newer tool called PIN OS, which I believe stands for the Pinnacle Operating System Installer, and which most certainly allows the installation of multiple operating systems on a single drive Raspberry Pi. PIN OS can be set up on a micro SD card or other storage device using its own rather cool website. However, here we're going to do everything using the Raspberry Pi Network OS Installer. And we're going to do so using our Raspberry Pi 5 in its uh, Neo 5 NVMe case, which as we can see is fitted with this SSD. The SSD is currently in factory state, it's got nothing on it, and we're going to set it up with installations of both Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu. Note that whilst here we're installing things to this M.2 SSD, the process is identical for setting up multiple operating systems on a micro SD card or USB storage device. Oh, for the network installer to work, the Pi must be connected to a wired network via Ethernet. But 
If you don't have an Ethernet connection available for setup, you can do exactly what I'm about to demonstrate using a local copy of Raspberry Pi Imager. So, let's turn on the power. There we go, and we'll go across to the uh, HDMI output. And because this Pi hasn't got an operating system available to boot from, we can just hold down the Shift key like this. And well, in fact, you can't see I'm holding down the Shift key, but I am. And this is taking us to the network installer. And uh, it's setting up a connection. We'll just uh, speed on through. And here we are running the network installer, which is just the same as running Raspberry Pi Imager locally, except we're doing it directly on the Pi without using another computer. It's great that Pi can now do this. It doesn't require another computer to help it get set up. So our next challenge is to get out our magnifying glasses and to read the text on this display. Why on earth with so much screen estate available, they choose to make the font this size, I cannot fathom. Particularly when the font is slightly bigger down here, but the font you have to read is absolutely tiny. Anyway, we will select here a Raspberry Pi 5 as device. I won't attempt to zoom in to show you these things because I just simply can't do it given the size of the font here. I'll just tell you what's going on. And so in this next box here, we'll now choose our operating system, which is down in MISC Utility Images, where we're going to select pin like that and pin again like that. And then we need to select our storage, which is going to be the SSD we've got on the Pi. It's crazy, isn't it? We've got a half terabyte SSD on the Raspberry Pi. How computing has changed. And then finally here, we need to make sure we've got the right language. For me, that is English. The keyboard here wants to be UK, which for some reason here is down under GB. And uh, there we are. And so now we can click on next, where it checks, are we sure? Yes, we're sure. We'll click on yes and use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through. And here we are, things are happening. PinOS has run up, so we can now install some operating systems. And I'd note that here, we could set up a Wi-Fi connection if needed, but here I've got a wired Ethernet connection, so I don't need to do that. So let's scroll down this list of general operating systems, where I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS with the recommended applications. And then a bit further down, I'm going to select Ubuntu 2404. And that's all I want to install, but uh, as we're here, I'll just point out what else you could install. There are lots of options available. They keep being added to all the time. There are various sailing related operating systems. There are various testing things here. There are various media related operating systems, things like a uh, Libra Lec, Kodi in other words. There is a recall box, various minimal installs, legacy installs, etc. But uh, I'll just stay with the two general installs of a Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu. And so all I need to do is to click on install like that. And we get the warning it's about to erase everything on our SSD, which is fine. I'll just click yes. And there we go. We've now got the option to adjust the amount of space allocated to each operating system on our storage device. And uh, here I'm going to accept the default. So if I didn't want to, I could click in here and enter another value. But uh, for now, I'll just click on OK and PinOS will now get on with downloading and installing our operating systems, which inevitably will take a bit of time. And so I'm now going to have a cup of tea and I'll come back to you when everything is finished. And here we are, installation is complete and we can now click on OK. And uh, there they are, our operating systems, Raspberry Pi OS and Ubuntu. I think I'd like Ubuntu at the top, so I'll select it and uh, move it up. And by default, PinOS will always boot the last selected operating system. Although you can override this, you can set what's called a sticky default by uh, clicking the checkbox. And so by default, this machine will always boot into Ubuntu. And so uh, let's boot into Ubuntu right now, where I'm going to speed through the initial setup process. There we are, Ubuntu is now nicely set up on this system. And in theory, if we reboot, we should get straight back into Ubuntu. So uh, let's try that. And here we are coming up again. We do get a transitory glimpse of PinOS, but yes, as expected, we boot straight back into Ubuntu. So I'll just log in. 
And we're back doing the usual Ubuntu stuff here on the Raspberry Pi. Ubuntu remains my favourite Raspberry Pi 5 operating system. And if you're wondering, we can see lots of SSDs mounted down here, lots of volumes, and these are from Raspberry Pi OS. So it's easy to exchange files between our multiple operating systems. And I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to do right now. We're now going to boot into Raspberry Pi OS. How do we do that, you cry? Well, what we will do is to select to uh, restart like that and uh, restart. And then after the system comes up, we can press the shift key. And a few moments later, we end up back here where we could reinstall things if we wish. But if we don't want to do that, we just press escape and all oh, look, we're back to our boot menu where here I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS, where once again, I'll need to go through a first boot process. And the system now requires a restart. And so once again, on boot, I need to press the shift key when we first see pin OS and then escape so I can select and boot the right operating system. And here we are arriving at our newly installed copy of Raspberry Pi OS, always very exciting. And hopefully you've now got a good idea about using PinOS to multi-boot on a single drive Raspberry Pi. Compared to most ARM-based single-bore computers, the Raspberry Pi has got a lot of different operating systems available. Being able to switch between them is therefore rather handy, and in that context, I hope you found this video to be useful. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.